guys, it's Touchable Now. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. This is a take two. I have had a world... Ah, oh, not even saying that because it's Kenzo World. I have had a world of technical issues over the past week. Spent four hours editing this video and it all failed. So I'm going back to my old format for now. Yeah. Hopefully it works. So today I'm reviewing Kenzo World. When this fragrance first came out, a lot of people messaged me and said, are you gonna review it, are you gonna review it, are you gonna review it? Because that happens when there's a new release. But given there are hundreds of releases every month, then it's really hard to keep up. But I get round to things eventually, so here I am. This fragrance is floral. It came out in 2016. The nose behind it is a major one, Francis Kirkjohn, and or Kirkjohn. And uh, if you don't know who he is, he has his own fragrance line. Maison Francis Kirkjohn, um, which is note to self, smell more of his fragrances because he has some great ones, so I've heard. This one's really lovely and I want to talk quickly, very quickly about the advert. Did you see the advert for this, for this fragrance? When it came out, it immediately caught my attention. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. It's really fun. You know, just, you're on YouTube, right? Just what, just go and search Kenzo World advert. It's basically just a lady that sneaks out of a party and dances like a crazy person around this gorgeous building and I loved it. Anyway, this is a floral fragrance. I would call it more of an aquatic floral and I will tell you the notes. So the notes are red berries or red fruity notes. They don't specify it really. It could be anything. Who knows guys, who knows? Egyptian jasmine, ambroxan, peony, and floral notes. I love it when perfumes just list floral notes because, I mean, that could be a bazillion things. What floral notes are there? And wait, jasmine is a floral, so is peony. Anyway, what will be will be. So before I tell you how it smells, I want to talk about ambroxan because ambroxan is the note that makes people's ears prick up usually, or it might be something that some people might not have heard of. Ambroxan is something that, it's a molecule that was originally derived from ambergris. And of course, ambergris is not easy to come by. You don't just happen upon ambergris one day in the sea. Some people do, because that's how it exists. But um, it's obviously not accessible. <laughs> but ambroxan is a really cool note. It's a really cool, mo cool molecule because it gives a fragrance a somewhat aquatic, I guess you could say silvery, almost metallic nuance to a fragrance and it also gives volume and it gives weight and it gives kind of projection. So it's it was an amazing discovery. I mean, if I discovered that, I'd be like, hey, yay, let's put this in everything. But anyway, since ambergris is very hard to come by because unfortunately it only occurs in 2% of the whales that it occurs in and it kills them when they poo it out of their backside. There was someone, I don't know who it was, that discovered you can get the same molecule from clary sage, which means yay, clary sage grows abundantly. You can grow clary sage and you can still get ambroxan. So ambroxan became more popular because of that. So perfumers started putting it in stuff and it's a major part of this fragrance, which is why I just rambled about that for the last minute. So I have worn the fragrance many times. <laughs> I did get myself a sample, I sprayed it on myself, I wore it. Um, because my last video messed up, I'm doing this from memory, which is a challenge for myself, but I remember how it smells. So when you first smell this fragrance, it is a, I would say, spring-like smell. It is on the aqueous side of peony. Peony is lovely, it's related to roses, and as far as I know, Peony is synthesized in fragrances a bunch. I'm not sure if they are actually distilled. Call me out if you know any different. I thought that it was something that was synthesized or an accord taken from maybe roses and added a few more things in. But it's more, if, if I'm gonna describe peony, it's like a more effervescent rose. It's a little bit more kind of open textured rose where roses can be very smooth and sweet depending on where they're from. And this is, a nondescript slash peony-like aqueous floral, a shimmery type feeling, and it's semi-sweet. It's never overly sweet, it's not a cloying fragrance, and the overall feeling I get from it is something that's super casual, super accessible, super wearable, and it's pretty. It's one of those ones that gives you 
I guess that immediate feeling of freshness and cleanliness, not that anyone's dirty when, you know, as a person, but sometimes you spray something on and you feel a little bit refreshed. So the Ambroxan in this plays a massive role because it does give the fragrance that spark of something a little bit shimmery, little bit aquatic. This isn't an aquatic floral in the likes of, say, Tommy Girl or um, things that I can't think of right now. But just think semi-aquatic, semi-sweet, semi-fruity and semi-floral. It's kind of balanced. It's not really where anything jumps out in abundance, but I guess that's the work of a master perfumer. Sometimes I feel like it reminds me of something else, but I can't really put my finger on it. And the first time I smelled it, I was kind of underwhelmed. However, wearing it and wearing it and wearing it, I, I've gotten to know the good parts of it. And I love the use of Ambroxan in it. It's used perfectly. It's, like I said, everything's balanced. So when this dries, some of the texture that you have in the opening is what disappears. It becomes more rounded. It's more of a roundy, ball-shaped, smooth thing that doesn't really get any sweeter, but it does lose the shimmer that you get in the opening. And that's where it becomes very quiet. The overall feeling of it, in terms of longevity and projection, is one that I think is quite quiet. It's super, super casual. It's one of those ones where you could pick up and go. The brief of this fragrance, I think, is where Kenzo wanted to inject the feeling of fashion into a perfume, where the carefree, free-spirited, wild kind of thing, and that's why the advert was kind of crazy and fun at the same time. But in reality, the perfume is giftable. That's, that's how I feel about it. I feel like if I smelled it on someone, I'd say, oh, you smell really nice. You know, you smell pleasant. There's nothing crazy in here, uh, and it's just, kind of cool, I like it. And the eye bottle thing as well, that's kind of the all-seeing eye bottle. You have the dangly pupil. Yeah. The performance of it is medium, I would say. Soft. Kind of close to skin. And longevity for me, I wore at least three sprays on my hand, sometimes, sometimes I wore it on my neck, five sprays. And it's one you can kind of feel a lot, but it's one of those get closer and hug me if you really want to feel it kind of fragrances. So what I guess I'm trying to say is this isn't a bold fragrance at all. It's, it, it's more of a skin scent. It's more of a personal thing. Sometimes I say it's like a veil. And there are people out there that like those types of things. Me personally, I like things that are going to knock you out when you walk in a room, but not everyone's the same. That's what makes perfume fun. Anyway, that's all I'm going to say about this, because I said most of this the other day, till 3 o'clock in the morning, when I was pulling my hair out, and I haven't got much left. If you want to get this fragrance, head on over to natino.co.uk, I will post a direct link in the description box. I'm out from Mono, click my logo down there to subscribe, or hit the subscribe button, and I will see you guys soon for another video. Yay, I made it! Oh god, I haven't edited it yet, it could be really bad. Anyway guys, I'll see you soon, goodbye.